Hi, ghoulies and ghoulettes. Welcome back to the Dave Decay Show. Tonight, I am going to be talking about remakes. I know, I know. It seems like there's always a new remake coming out every other week, and it destroys the original film. However, there are some really good remakes out there. So that's what this show is going to be about tonight. I'm counting down the top 10 best remakes ever. So let's get right to it. Number 10. The Ring. It's originally based off of the 1998 Japanese horror film called Ring. And it was one of the first, if not the first, remakes of a Japanese horror classic. Yeah, it's a little outdated now because it's about ancient technology and I'm talking about the VHS tape. And a lot of kids nowadays who will watch this film probably won't even understand what a VHS tape is. So not only is it a horror film, it's also an educational tool. But once you get this videotape and you put it into your VCR, the phone will ring and a creepy little kid's voice says you have seven days, which means that's how many days you have left to live. Back in 2002, when The Ring was released, we hadn't really seen anything like this. Now, it seems like every other week, another Japanese horror film is being remade. Still, The Ring, even though it is a little outdated, like I said, stands up as a brilliant film, and one that will keep you up at night. Number nine. The Blob. So the original Blob was released way back in 1958, starring the 27-year-old Steve McQueen in his first film role playing, well, a teenager. Now, don't get me wrong, I've always loved the original Blob because there hasn't been a monster like that before and, well, never since. Just a big red ball of gelatinous goo that devours everything that it comes into contact with. Now that's what I call good time. So the plot was remade in 1988 to a very, very mediocre low box office response, which I think is why a lot of the younger people probably doesn't even know the original Blob exists, let alone the remake. Now while the Blob remake was really cheesy, it was really well done and a fun movie. They took the concept of this rolling ball of goo and added some brand new 1988 special effects to it. Now, even though it was made such a long time ago, the creature looks amazing in this film. Not only was it just a big red ball of goo this time, you could actually see its victims floating around inside of the body. Really cool. There's been rumors for the last couple years they're supposed to be making a remake of the remake, which actually I would be really very much looking forward to seeing. Number 8. The Hills Have Eyes. Now, the original Hills Have Eyes was directed by legendary Wes Craven, who we just lost recently. Now, this was about a normal family crossing the country when they end up in a nightmare situation out in the desert. They encounter cannibals who live in the mountains. So when the remake shows up in 2006, I was a lot like everybody else, screaming, why? Why did they have to remake this film? However, they did make big changes to it, and I thought all the changes were great. The story was a little similar, except for one thing. There were no longer cannibals, but mutants from a nuclear fallout. A great twist on the story, if you ask me, that actually worked, and worked well. The movie is very action-oriented, with some great acting and some fantastic practical effects. Number 7. The Little Shop of Horrors. The original Little Shop of Horrors came out in 1960, and it was sort of a comedy horror film directed by Roger Corman. And the movie was actually filmed in two days on some old sets that were just before they were going to be torn down. It slowly became a cult classic, followed by a Broadway musical. So this remake is actually based off of the musical which was based off the original film. Frank Oz brought Audrey II to life as an amazing puppet. All the songs were very memorable in this film, and the cast, come on people. Rick Moranis, Ellen Green, Steve Martin, Jim Belushi, John Candy, Bill Murray, and it just goes on and on. Just an incredible cast, great remake, and lots of fun actually. It's a great mix of music and horror. But make no mistake, this is a horror movie. And if you can, pick up the Blu-ray that came out a few years ago that has the original ending on it. It's absolutely fantastic. Number six. 
Fright Night. Now, the original Fright Night was released back in 1985. The film is about this dude named Charlie Brewster, who discovers his next door neighbor is actually a vampire. Now, that story alone is just great. Never been done before. So with no one actually believing Charlie that there's a vampire next door, he actually goes to this old-time TV horror host named Peter Vincent, played by the legendary Rowdy McDowell. This movie was, and still, is one of my all-time favorite vampire films. So when the remake was announced, I was pretty mad. It was one of those films that I said, no, I will not go see this. However, I must hang my head and say, I did go see it and it was surprisingly great. The story actually remained mostly the same. However, what I really liked about this film is they updated pretty much everything. The horror host was out, and now they brought in David Tennant. If you don't know who that is, well, I can't help you. Tennant was great as Peter Vincent. I didn't think anyone could replace Roddy McDowell, but he really gave him the run for his money. Number five, Dawn of the Dead. All right, so I thought that this was a point Hollywood had lost its freaking mind. Why would somebody attempt to remake this zombie classic? First of all, you don't touch a George R. Romero film. You just don't do it. Not only should it never have been remade, I thought, it should never even thought about being remade. I actually refused to go to the show to go see this one. It took me over a year, actually, after it even came out on DVD for me to even watch it. So I finally sat down, held my nose because I knew it was going to be a stinker and turned it on. But once again, I was completely shocked. I loved this movie from beginning to end. It was one of the very first movies that Zack Snyder, who went on to direct The Watchmen, Superman, and now Superman vs. Batman, had done. It was also back before the zombies had literally taken over the world. They just didn't make good zombie movies anymore. And well, still don't. So if there's people out there who still refuse to see this movie, let me tell you, sit down and watch it. You will be surprised. Number four, Let Me In. Let Me In is a remake of the original 2008 Swedish horror film, Let the Right One In, which I actually kind of still like that title better. Now the original, I was a huge fan of, don't get me wrong, but when I heard there was gonna be a remake, I actually was okay with this one. Because I know a lot of people out there don't watch foreign movies, even foreign horror movies. So I thought this was the right choice for American remake. This brilliant story transferred extremely well to the American audience and brought with it Chloe Grace Mortez. This is actually my second favorite vampire film of all time, next to Fright Night. So for those who have never seen it, Let Me In isn't your run-of-the-mill horror film. It's more of a romantic horror film and it moves at a slower pace that might turn some people off who expect more of an action-packed bloody vampire film. Do not let this movie turn you off. The originality of this film is outstanding and I cannot stress enough how incredible the acting is in this film. Number three, The Evil Dead. Here we go, another classic that should never ever needed to be remade. However, the first time I saw the trailer for this, I was sold. It looked as if they were not trying to actually remake The Evil Dead, but they were making sort of a new version of The Evil Dead, not one that took place in Ash's universe, or at least maybe before or after he had gotten to the cabin. I was totally fine with that. They pulled this off brilliantly, with almost all practical effects, which is so nice to see. And there was gore in this film, and more gore. This is actually one of the goriest films I've seen in a long time. But the movie is actually scary, fun, and exciting. It's just a roller coaster ride from beginning to end. Number two. All right, we're almost getting to number one here. So number two is The Fly. Like Let Me In, I thought The Fly deserved a remake. Not that there was anything wrong with the original Fly. It was a classic, and it's a classic for a reason. But with modern technology, or at least as modern as it was in 1986 when they made this, it brings all new ideas to the playing field. Instead of him turning into a fly all at once, Jeff Goldblum, the star of this movie, was slowly transformed day by day into this creature, Brundlefly. Also with Gina Davis as another starring role in this film, 
The acting was incredible. Both were very believable and just amazing. This film, however, like The Evil Dead, is very disturbing and gross. Even today, it holds up as being really gross. I'm sure in the future, we will get a yet another fly. I'm okay as long as they continue this great story. Now we hit number one. And actually, it's one of my favorite horror films of all time. And it's a remake. John Carpenter's The Thing. Now the original movie is about a US Air Force crew and scientists who find a crashed UFO out in the Arctic. They find a body thrown from the UFO, dig it up, and they take it back to their outpost. Once the body is defrosted, it's a plant-like creature who starts attacking everybody. Now, John Carpenter's movie has a very little or nothing to do with this. In the remake, the thing is not a plant-like creature. It's actually an organism that can imitate any living thing. The movie makes great use of its cold and isolation and the incredible talent of Rob Bottin as one of the most original, gross-out, and terrifying monsters, I think, that's ever been put on film. Also, it has one of the best endings to any horror movie ever. Even on top of that, the cast here with Kurt Russell and a ton of other stars is amazing. All right, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed the list. If you have any movies you thought that should be on here, drop me a message below and let me know. All right, ghoulies and ghoulettes, I will see you next time on the Dave Decay Show. Oh, and make sure if you like the show, please subscribe so I know I'm doing it right.